Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be discussing the car fleet problem. In this problem we are given a group of cars and a distance which represents the distance of a destination location for each car. Each car is assigned a position as well as a speed. So for example if we are told that our destination is 12, we could picture a journey being 12 units long. I'll use miles for this video, so we're going to say the journey is going to be 12 miles long. We are also given two parallel arrays. The first is a position array. This represents the positions that a car starts out at. For example, if the positions given to us are 2, 0, 4, and 7, this means that there are cars that start out at each of these positions. I've given each car a different color just to make it easier for us to keep track of them but the color itself is not relevant to the problem. The other array is a speed array. This represents the corresponding speed that each car is traveling at. Since I used miles as the unit for distance, I'll use miles per hour as the unit of speed. So for example, this means the orange car at position two is traveling at four miles per hour. The blue car at position zero is traveling at one mile per hour, the red car at position 4 is traveling at 2 miles per hour, and the green car at position 7 is traveling at 1 mile per hour. I've written in the speed of the car on our road just for some clarity. Since these cars are traveling at different speeds, ultimately some faster ones might run into some slower ones. In this problem, the road only has one lane, so cars are not allowed to pass one another. Instead, if a faster car comes next to a slower car, it will ride right behind it and form a group, which we are going to call a car fleet. Let me demonstrate what I mean with this example. So here on this slide, you can see the cars start out, let's just say at time zero, or T0 for short. After one hour, which I've called T1, you'll see that each car has traveled a certain distance. The blue car and the green car have moved forward by one mile. The red car has moved forward by two miles. But the important thing to notice is that the orange car has moved forward by four miles and has now caught up to the red car such that they occupy the same position. At this point, what happens is that the orange car rides right behind the red car and can't pass it. Unfortunately, this means that the orange car now has to slow down to the red car's speed. So now I'm going to change the speed of the orange car in our drawing to two. These two cars, the orange and red one, now combine to form a single car fleet. For the sake of this problem, we aren't going to take into consideration the length of the cars themselves when they form a group and drive right behind one another. So even if we had a group of 1000 cars, that would take up the same space as a group of just two cars. This group is an example of what we're defining in this problem as a car fleet. A car fleet is a group of one or more cars occupying the same position, traveling at the same speed. Notice how I said one or more, which means that a single car in itself is a car fleet. So right now at T1, we have three existing car fleets. The blue one, the red and orange one, and the green one. Previously at T0, we had four different car fleets one for each car. Okay, let's keep going with this example. After another hour, we are at T2. The blue and green car have both moved forward one mile and the red and orange fleet has moved forward by two miles. So at this T2 point, we still have three different car fleets. Moving forward another hour, we see the green car and the blue car have moved forward by one mile. But now the red and orange fleet has caught up to the green car. This means that the red, orange, and green car combine to form a single fleet. The red and orange car are limited by the green car's speed of one. So they too have to now travel at one mile per hour for the rest of the journey. At this point, t equals three, there are now only two car fleets, the green, red, and orange one, and the blue one. The ultimate goal of this problem is to find out how many car fleets will ultimately arrive at the destination. So for this particular example, the correct answer we would want to return is two, because at t equals five, two hours from now, the orange, red, and green car will arrive at the destination. This counts as one car fleet. And finally at t equals 12, the blue car arrives at the destination. 
and this counts as the second car fleet. It's important to note that once a car or a group of cars arrives at the destination, their journey is complete and they are removed from the road. So even if two car fleets were to merge sometime later, if they don't merge at or before the destination, we don't consider that merge. So anyway, because a total of two car fleets pass the destination in this example, we would return two as our final answer. Hopefully now you understand the problem a bit better. Before we dive into the solution, let's just look at what the solution function signature looks like. As you can see, there are three variables, destination, position, and speed. Also some constraints. The first is that all positions are going to be before the destination. So that means when all the cars start off at T0, they are all going to be behind the destination. The second is that all positions are going to be unique. And the third is that the length of the position and the speed array are going to be the same. So every car is going to be given a speed. Okay, now let's look at how to come up with a solution. So the solution revolves around this idea. Let's say we are looking at a particular car, this red one here. We need to look at the car behind this red car as well. Let's say this green car. And there are two cases. Either the green car is going to catch up to the red car before the destination, or it's not going to catch up. In the first case, where the green car catches up to the red car, they are going to form a group, and if they form a group, they are going to arrive at the destination at the same time. We also know that the green car is going to be limited in speed by the red car. We can then extend this logic to the car behind the green car. Let's say this blue car. Knowing the speed of the red-green group, we ask, is this blue car going to catch up to the red-green group? If it does, we know that this blue car will again hold the two bullet points I've written. It is going to form a group with the red-green group, and it is going to arrive at the destination at the same time as the car in front of it. Now let's look at what happens in the second case, if a car does not catch up to the car in front of it. In this case, we know that all the cars behind this car, let's say the blue one, because of the fact that the cars cannot pass another, we know that if the blue car does not join the red-green group, all the cars behind this blue car will not combine with this red-green group either. So then we know that all the cars behind this red-green group are not going to be joining the red-green group. At this point, you might be wondering about the cars in front of the red-green group. How do we know that the red-green group might not be joining a slower car ahead of them? And this question points out why we need to process the cars from right to left. So in other words, for all the cars in the problem, what we do is we look at the rightmost car, in this case the red car, and we compare it to the car right behind it, and ask, is this yellow car going to catch up to the red car? Let's say it does. Then we compare this blue car to the red-yellow group and ask, will the blue car catch up to it? Let's say it does not. Then we know we can finalize this yellow-red group and add one to our counter. And then we can continue with this comparison. We look at the orange car and say, will the orange car catch up to the blue car? Let's say it doesn't. Then we finalize this blue car as its own group and add one to our counter. Finally, we ask if the green car will catch up to the orange car. Let's pretend it does. Then we group them together. If there were more cars behind this green car, we would continue this process until we run out of cars. But since the green car is the last car in this example, we can finalize the green-orange group and say that our final answer is three car fleets. Okay. Hopefully at this point you have a rough idea of what our solution is going to look like. So let's begin to write the code for it. So as we saw, we need to process the cars from right to left. In our code, this means that we have to process the positions in descending order. So the first thing we need to do is sort the positions. And you might have noticed that a problem with sorting right away is that we will no longer know which positions corresponds to which speeds in the speeds array. So before we sort, we are going to make a map called car speed map, which maps a car's position to its speed. Remember that all the positions are unique, so this map will allow us to look up a car's speed given a position. 
Now we could run our for loop in reverse to process the cards in decreasing position, but instead we can also just reverse the array so that we can go from left to right in the iterating part. You don't have to do this, but for me personally, it's just a bit easier to run the loop in a non-reverse order. In Python, you can actually reverse the sort by setting the reverse parameter to true in the sort method. We're also going to need a fleet counter. This is what we are ultimately going to return as our answer. This is going to start off at zero. So if you remember back to the explanation where I was comparing cars to the end car, this is what we are going to start doing with our code. In order to see if one car ultimately catches up to another before the destination, we need to compute the time at which a car arrives at the destination and see if it arrives before or after another car. To do this, we are going to need to recall some things about distance you might have learned in grade school. Namely, the equation we are trying to recall is that speed is a unit of distance divided by time. For example, a unit of speed like miles per hour or kilometers per hour for those of you outside the United States is a unit of distance either a mile or a kilometer, divided by an hour. Some algebra gets us from the first line to the second line, where we multiply both sides of the equation by time. And to get to the third line, we divide both sides by speed. So how does that help us? Well, remember, we are trying to compute the time at which a car reaches the destination. So we can do that with this equation the time of the destination is going to be equal to the distance we need to travel to the destination divided by that car's speed. The distance to the destination is just the final destination distance minus the initial position of the car. And the speed of the car is given to us and we saved it in the speed map. So now in our code, we are going to use this formula. I've made a variable called finish time, which is the time that this car is going to reach the destination. And this is computed using the formula I just derived. The next step is to see if this car arrives at the destination before or after the current group. And to do that, we actually need to compute the rightmost car's finish time to start off before we enter the for loop. I've added this into our code and we use the rightmost car because initially our current fleet is comparing itself to just the rightmost car. Remember back to our visual, we're talking about this rightmost car here. After we compute the current fleet finish time, if the finishing time of the ith car we are iterating on is greater than the current fleet finish time, it means that the ith car does not catch up and the current fleet is finalized. Remember earlier in my explanation when I said, let's see if this blue car will catch up to the yellow red fleet. And if it doesn't, then we know we can finalize the yellow red group and add one to the counter. That is what we're doing with our code here. We add one to the fleet counter, and then we also have to reassign the current fleet finish time variable to this ith car's finish time. Basically, this is us updating the current fleet time to be for the blue car, so we can continue this algorithm and compare its finish time to the cars behind it. And finally, when we do exit the for loop, we need to manually add one to the fleet count to account for the very last fleet. Okay, that is it for this solution. The last thing we need to do is go over the time and space complexity. If we let n be the amount of cars given to us in our input, then the time complexity is n log n to sort plus and for the for loop. The dominating term is n log n, so that is what our time complexity reduces down to. For space, we use n space for our car speed map, so our space complexity is O of n. This is actually the most optimal solution that I could come up with, and looking around the internet, it seems like this is the best solution out there, but if you do come up with a better one, feel free to post the idea in the comments. That is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful and good luck on all your interviews.